Okay, your assignment this week is to translate a uh, Java program that includes a couple classes or objects uh, into C Sharp. And so I'm going to walk you through a similar example. Uh, both of these original Java programs come from examples from the 2087 Java 2 course. Uh, so I'm going to walk you through one that in, works with employees. I've opened it up in NetBeans so we can look at the Java a little bit. Um, so this is the employee test program that includes the main. It creates a couple employees and then does some outputs here. Now there's a an employee object, uh, uh, employee class, I should say, um, that has the name and the date of birth of an employee. And then there's a based on that inheriting from that. There are two types of employees: full-time employees and part-time employees. Now, you know, the employee class is an abstract class, so there's the word abstract, meaning we won't create objects of type employee, we'll only create full-time employees and part-time employees generally. So there's an abstract, also, uh, pay method here that's not defined, doesn't really do anything here. And so we'll see, so we'll have to do some changes to that uh, when we translate it into C uh, Sharp. Um, so we have a full-time employee and a part-time employee, and they just have information like the full-time employee has salary. And there's a, a constructor, and then a get salary, and a set salary. And then a, recal a redefinition of this pay method. And so it'll be, excuse me, um, We'll watch uh, these attributes like salary, and then there will be a get and a set. And you originally were translate those over, but then we'll do some changes. So I'm going to go over to uh, Visual Studio, create a new project, and we'll make a console project. I'm going to call this uh, employee uh, example. Okay, and here's my main routine here, and so I'm just going to go grab the code from the main routine in Java and put it over there. So that was in the employee test file. Here's within the main, here's the methods we're going to have. I'm going to grab pose and put those right in the main over here. And again, we're going to run into some problems with this console, I mean, system.out print line, we're going to want to change that to console.write line. Okay. Now the other errors we're getting is that it doesn't see that we have uh, objects for the full-time employee, the part-time employee, or the employee defined, so we're going to have to set those up. So I'm going to create the employee class first. Uh, again, I can go to project uh, add class, or I can just click on under employee here, um, generate a new employee file class for that. So I'm just going to do that. Here's my employee file. Now let's go over to Java and grab the employee information. So again, I'm going to grab everything within the uh, this class here. Um, actually going to grab the class on down so we get the abstract over there too um. okay so um, code came over here now string isn't defined and because that's built into the system so I have to make sure I add my using system at the top um, and then that should work. Uh, the abstract class definition should be fine here. Now date is a little different here. Uh, in Visual Studio it, it's a date time. So I'm going to change this to date time. So today, anytime you see date, we'll switch it to date time. So that's the built-in type uh, for handling dates. Uh, and durations in C sharp rather than date. 
But other than that, the class should uh, compile fine. Uh, okay, so then let's do uh, let's get a full-time employee uh, class and create that. So there's my full-time employee. Let's open that up. Grab all that code and move it over there. So So the first thing I notice is that there's a problem with the uh, the way we do inheritance here. Um, in Java, we'd say full-time employee extends employee. In C sharp, we replace that extends with a colon. So we just say full-time employee colon um, employee. Now the other, the next problem is that it says. Um, full-time employee does not implement inherited abstract member employee pay. Remember in the employee class there was a method called pay and it didn't do anything. It was an abstract method meaning that the these parent child classes have to implement it. But it is down here. If I go down and look, it's, uh, pay is down here. But we have to add a specific override function here or uh, attribute here. So in pay we have to say uh, public override uh, pay. So add that in there and then that should get rid of the error in the class definition. Okay, so we have some issues here. String, again we have to have, uh, using system and then dates, gotta be date time. One thing I'd like you to watch is that, I mean, how similar the two languages are. Um, a lot of people think that um, C Sharp is based on uh, C, and it has some similarities to C, but it is very similar to Java as far as how it's set up and the syntax. So the last thing we have to worry, worry about or look at is in the construct here, so this is the constructor for full-time employee. We're given the name, the date of birth, and the salary. And we call uh, super, which is the constructor for the parent class, and pass in the name and the date of birth. So that calls on this uh, constructor in the, in the parent class and sets that up. And we do this a different way here. And it's kind of weird. We, we're going to pull that, or I'm just going to uh, comment that out here so we can leave it there. And we're going to actually put it after this line here, we do a colon and then we call, instead of super, we say base uh, there. Sometimes people will put it on the next line like that. Um, but uh, rather than calling super, the, the, we use base to call the base class or the parent class. And then we call the constructor here. Um, the one thing we have to be careful of is we don't have a we don't want a semicolon there, um, because it's part of this long line. So it's just space, just like we don't have a semicolon at the end of um, the headings for each of the methods. Okay, so that should be the. I'm save some of these, and now we'll go on and do the last one. Um, the part-time employee, we'll add that in. Here, I'll just let me add it the other way just so you can see it. I'm going to go to project, uh, add class, and add part-time employee. Okay, and then let's go to Java. First Java, there, Java. Grab the part-time employee. And grab this class. And leaving the namespace there, just pasting in the class there. 
And again, we'll see similar issues. Um, instead of extends, we need a colon. And again, when we're doing this, um, calling the super class, uh, the parent class uh, constructor in the constructor here, we want to just do that with a up here in that line with a colon and this, and then again, make sure we don't have the semicolon there. And date becomes date time. Oops, and I forgot to change the word super to base. That's, that's okay, so we should get that working. Now again, we have this line up here, and it says that part-time employee does not implement abstract employee pay. Now there is a shortcut there. I mean, you can a solution. Sometimes we often do is you can go up here. You can just click and say implement abstract class. Uh, so I'm going to click on that, and it's going to add this pay method down here. But I already have a pay method down there, so it's just going to add two. So now I have this. Oh, let's line these up a little. So I have my original pay method, and then the new one with the override method. So I don't need this new override one. Uh, it doesn't do anything. So it just, it, if you do that, just make sure you delete this. I'm just going to copy this override and put it up there. That's what we really need, and delete this. We just need one pay method, and it has to have override in it. Okay. I think that's everything that's working with finding this class. So now I should be able to run this class. Uh, and control F5. Oops, there's still some hairs here. Where are these hairs? Oh, I have an error here. I deleted one too many brackets when I was deleting that pay thing. I forgot we have a namespace and we have a class definition. There, that's better. Okay. Oh, and there's a couple date times I forget. All right, zero errors, that's better. Okay. Now let's try to run this. Oops. Oh, I'm trying to run, run it the right way so we can see the output. There, and it should print out the information, uh, run the classes and everything fine. Now that's the basics of uh, translating stuff uh, here, but it we're missing some key components of C, uh, C Sharp. So there's some things that C Sharp does that Java doesn't do. And so we're going to look at one of those, um, particularly well, how we implement objects and attributes. So you see often like we have name here, and we have a get name and a set name. I'm going to move these so they're all together. And similarly, we have a date and time and a get date and time here. Um, but now when we access these, we have to always access them through the get and the set methods. Um, C Sharp has a new way of doing this where we can access the, the names directly. We can just assign the name. Uh, it's called a property. It's very similar to an at attribute here, uh, but it's called a property and it, it works a little, it's more integrated in the system. So I'm going to change this name uh, to private. You could probably leave it as protected, but I often have this totally private because we don't even need the child classes to use this. Uh, and then I'm going to add another a uh, public interface or a public property here, a string, and call it name with a capital N. And this is the inner the variable I'll use then to access the the name is this new name. Now, right afterwards, I'm going to put in uh, uh, brackets, and I'm going to use add a get and a set method. Um, 
Now these are not called get name or set names. They're special properties that are automatically called when we use the name variable. And so here for get name, I can just copy this code up here and put it inside the get method. And for set, I can copy this code up here. Now set has to be a little different because now by default here with set we define a variable called name, a, a parameter called name, and we say this dot name equals name. So uh, this the name here is this local parameter because its scope says it's the closest definition here. Now this dot name is the name attribute up here in the class. Okay. So I'm going to do so. It's say the parameter we're given. It's saving that into the name attribute up here. I have to do something similar here. I'm just going to say name equals. And there's a default parameter here called value. I can spell it right. Uh, that's built into the set function. Value is whatever is assigned here. So I say name equals value. So now I can. I won't need these. I can delete these. And so this is my name, uh, changing uh, um, the name attribute into a, uh, a name property. Now where I'll see that now is like in my program, rather than saying employee.getName parenthesis here, I can just say employee.name. And it will automatically call getName for me. So I just have to say employee.name. That's why it's kind of like a, we call it a property, it, it's like just an attribute of variable, but we can access the getters or direct or uh, setters automatically. In fact, if I wanted to set them something an employee, I could just say like uh, employee to, uh, rather than saying dot set name, I can just say employee to dot name equals, let's see, David. So, um, and when you do this, when you do an assignment here, it will call the set method automatically and make this the value. So when you have this line here with the property, it's going to go over, uh, find the name property, find the set thing, set the value to whatever's on the right side of the assignment, and then uh, run the code here. So. Um, we want to probably change all of our uh, variables date of birth over to this sort of property stuff too to make it more C uh, sharp like. Same, similarly for over here like salary there's the set let's do salary there's a private salary. I'm going to move this down it, um, when Jen did this originally she did it uh, with the construct the attributes and then the constructor. So I'm just going to move this down here. Um, okay, salary, set salary, get salary. So I already have a private double salary. I'm going to add this public double salary with a capital um, S. reformat this code here. Okay. Um, so I added a public uh, double salary capital S and after that I'm going to add a get and a set routine method or property attributes. And again, I can just move uh, with some modification this code in here. So this is the set code. Um, and this is the get code. So get just returns the salary. Set's going to check if the salary is greater than zero. The new value for salary is greater than zero, and then set the salary. So we have to do some editing here. Again, we don't have this local salary variable 
uh, here. So we have a new thing called value. So if value, if the new value is greater than zero, so then set, we're just going to say, well, I could leave that back here. Say this dot salary to the new value. Otherwise, set this salary to zero. So again, I have to look through my code, and anytime I'm using this, the, the parameter here to the set, I have to change that to value. Okay, then I can get rid of these old methods here. So again, when you work on the assignment, I want you to change all of the uh, attributes here to properties, these things of built-in get and sets. So now I think I should be able to run my program again. It should run fine. Yep. Okay, that ends this recording. Good luck.